everybody. This is John Crutchfield. This is the Grab the Map podcast, and we're excited to have you today. Um, I'm excited to have you listening again, where every week we get to talk about rental real estate investing. We get to talk about buying properties, fixing them up and renting them out or flipping them. We get to talk about wholesaling them sometimes. We get to talk about all things real estate. And today I've got a guest for you that I've been hoping to have for a while. Uh, Sean O'Rourke is here. You should be able to see him. And uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, rental real estate. Um, I think a good topic for today um, is just the, the getting started, right? Jumping off, getting started, um, how to start a real estate business, uh, maybe with little money, no money. Um, Sean has a very interesting story and uh, we'll title this later and you'll see what the title became, but um, we're going to get started. Hey, Sean, you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. How are you? Man, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm still getting used to being on YouTube and people being able to see me when I do this. It's a, it's a different <laughs> dynamic, but uh, <laughs> I, I like seeing the, the simple home exits, man. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate Look, it. Nice brand. Nice brand. So um, when I first met you, it was Bearded Property Investors, and I also see a beard there. Is it still Bearded yeah. Property Investors? Yeah. So that's one of, uh, that's one of the LLCs that we own. Yes. So awesome. we still have that. Awesome. Well, very glad to have you. Um, one of the things that, that, um, I really like about our interactions is that you're usually very open, uh, with information, very open with what you're doing. Um, sometimes so much so that it, I think you might create a little competition for yourself, but, um, you're always willing to share ideas. And so I'm glad you came on, uh, the podcast today. Uh, just keep in mind, everybody, that you can always message us at grabthemap at gmail.com. I answer every single email that goes to grabthemap at gmail.com. And um, we're on YouTube. So just comment below if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to interact with us. We respond to every single post. So let's jump right in. Sean O'Rourke, um, Simple Home Exits. Um, I like just, just asking you to start with, like, you're in real estate. What are you doing right now? What is your business currently doing? Um, give us a little background on what you have going on and then we'll, we'll ask a little bit more about your story. Okay. Yeah. So I know you, you said earlier, I might create a little bit of competition for myself. I would say that's more encouragement because oh. I'm bad competitive. So it just encourages me even more to work harder. Awesome. So I would awesome. Say, <laughs> um, uh, so background, background is, initially back in 2006 and seven, um, I've always hustled in some manner, uh, whether that be uh, working hard or, or whatever, found something, whether it be an ATV that you wanted to fix up and sell some way. I always had that mentality that I needed to do something besides just working a nine to five. And so um, back in 2006 and seven i created a um a decorative concrete business and we scored and stained and stamped concrete for a few years there um and and did pretty well uh, but i got introduced to the construction side of real estate and um 2008 9 actually 10 is really when i got hurt um in the collapse uh just because I ended up getting in too deep with some of the construction guys, some of the spec home builders, and uh, and and they went belly up, and so it, it, it hurt me because I was too deep in their pockets. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up I was doing that full time, and I ended up dropping that business, um, and and just so happened the Lord took care of me because I was eating into any savings that I had, and out of the blue, the company that I my previous company that I was just with. Um, called me out of the blue and said, hey, we're looking for a uh, maintenance manager. Would you be interested? So that's how that all started. So I got into back into manufacturing. It's in manufacturing for about 12 years. Um, we manufactured pharmaceutical coolers for the pharma industry. And uh, that still on the backside of my mind, and I know people can resonate with this because I know there's guys out there just like you and I, John, that know that uh, doing something else besides working for someone is what we really want to do and so that's what i was doing in the back of my mind that was churning but i didn't have any money i lived like everybody else which was i made really good money but the problem is, is i set my bills to what i was making so in all honesty i was paycheck to paycheck like 90 percent of america me too um, I've, I've definitely been there yeah yeah so um 
so through that process, I still had to hustle and figure out a way, okay, how I was going to make a living the way I wanted to live. And um, a friend of mine approached me and said, Sean, he said, um, we, we're doing quite a few flips. He said, would you be willing to help me on a flip? I said, absolutely. He said, well, what we'll do is you manage the flip for us and we'll pay you a percentage of whatever the net proceeds would be. And I said, awesome. So that's what happened. I managed the flip. I found the contractor. John, it was an absolute nightmare and I hated it. The contractor was terrible, ended up getting on meth and stealing crap from the house. I mean, it was a nightmare. And so I was like, what am I doing? This is not what I want to do. And so I, uh, I got online and I was like, there's got to be something easier that I can do in real estate uh, than this right here. And, um, and I found wholesaling. Uh, again, you know, I was paycheck to paycheck, but I had some credit cards because I still had good credit. I paid my bills. And, uh, and so I started watching YouTube videos and, and um, just learning podcasts. I would lay in bed. My wife and I'd be watching TV, but I would have my AirPods in and I'm listening to podcasts, not watching TV. And I just en engulfed myself in real estate, everything real estate, anything and everything. And uh, I took a thousand dollars on that credit card and I bought some lists, um, just general lists from real estate lists, um, absentee owners and things of that sort. And uh, and then skip traced them. So I got their phone numbers, their skip, skip trace services where it gives you cell phone numbers. And I called them, got on the phone. If I was on my lunch break, I was calling. If I was on my breaks at work, I was calling. On my way home, I was calling people. And I actively called every day. I had no idea, honestly, what the market values of properties were, but I was still calling people. I was taking so, action. So all the while, like you're still, you still have a job. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still working in a nine to five. So you, you're mm. doing this, this is a side hustle for you at this point. A side hustle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. And, right. So, uh, yeah, keep going. But, um, so, so, uh, I, I was just actively calling. Well, I ended up after about two weeks of hard phone calls, side hustle, but every minute that I had free, not at work, um, I, I ended up getting a contract on two houses in Baldwin. And um, um, I was freaking out. You know, what do I do? I had no idea. You know, I know I'd listen to these podcasts and stuff, but I really honestly had no idea. I didn't know anybody that bought. And I uh, just started actively then calling, posting some things on Facebook. Hey, got a deal, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and someone reached out to me and bought it. My first deal, I made 750 bucks. It didn't even pay for the amount of money that I put on my credit card. But I knew at that point, it was time. I knew it could work. And so, um, and so I just dove in head first. Yeah, you, you dove in all the way. I was looking over here for this uh, book I've got. It's called Start Ugly. I usually have it sitting right here. But the guy, that's the whole point of the book is he's like, you got to start. <laughs> and I hear, <laughs> a lot, I hear a lot of that that comes from that book. You're like, you didn't know if it was a good deal or a bad deal. You didn't know exactly what you had, but you knew that you needed to get started. Right. And you got yeah. you got started. Um, Seven hundred and fifty bucks. How did how did that feel? Oh man, it was absolutely amazing. You know, I was still in debt 250 bucks, but I was on cloud nine. Yeah. You, know? you were on cloud nine because you had taken taken an education from YouTube and podcast and turned it into 750 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. that's, that's amazing. There's a lot uh, of of overlap between our stories. Um my education in real estate is 100% podcast and YouTube. 100% <laughs> Like, and I did the same thing. I'd be on the way to church in the morning and they invented these little, uh, these little headphones here. And I'd have my <laughs> headphone on this side and my wife talking to me and I've got, I've got a podcast in my ear and she has no idea that I'm getting educated at the same time as I'm, as I'm driving to church and, and listening to her talk. Honey, I am listening to you, by the way. Yeah. Um, I, don't do, I don't do that anymore. I've actually stopped doing that. <laughs> But uh, I did it. I did it every day for a couple of years, I feel like. So that's pretty cool. So I heard a lot of stuff that that we might want to just delve into here. But, you know, the first thing I heard is that you actually owned a business before 
and you you you, you didn't have a job before you had yeah. dived in um which i think is is different than what i even knew about your story um because that tells me that that this this go at it is an exercise in perseverance for you right mm -hmm. um tell me this like what are you doing this time to maybe um recession proof your business or that that you feel like would make you better prepared if there was a kind of a, an, a disruption in the market this time that you maybe didn't do that first time yeah yeah so um there's i think three different things that i'm doing currently one is i am paying off um things that are not assets so anything that's a liability i'm actively paying that note down so that I don't have that bill. Okay. Uh, the second, the second thing is I am building a nest egg that should be able to sustain me for two years. Um, so that I, I want that kind of nest egg. Um, now I still might use it as long as, um, as long as I have uh, liquidity and I can get it back out pretty quick. Uh, but I am building that nest egg. So I don't want cash just sitting in the bank, but I do want some cash sitting in the bank. Um, and then the third thing is diversification. So um, I'm diversifying portfolios from single families, multifamilies, many storages, uh, some commercial. So I'm diversifying the rental portfolio and multiple streams of, of revenue. So we're building out some other things to build out some other streams of revenue that are associated with real estate, but not all real estate. Okay, so I'm 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 taking notes now. So diversifying, um, making sure that you you stay liquid, um, making sure that you you have like some lead time. If there is a disruption, I heard you say a couple of years of 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 maybe a, a reserves would uh would definitely be helpful if there is a turnaround. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. That's a big difference from paycheck to paycheck. That's a yeah. big difference, right? So yeah. what does the mentality have to be like on the spending side to be able to, to save up and, and be this liquid where you're saving, um, you know, two years of reserves? Mm. Yeah, well, you know, one thing is, is uh, through the business that we've created with Simple Homes, the income is drastically changed for one, but two, uh, the mindset is I still live um, actually probably less than what I was living on prior to the jump to full time. Mm -hmm. So I haven't changed my mindset or my thought process of, okay, revenue or, or income is increased. Uh, so my living habits and spending can increase. It's, it is, no, I need to stay, stay um, pretty clear cut on a regiment for a certain uh, period of time so that I know that I can at least build that nest egg. Um, you know, and two, this is a new venture. So, I mean, it's relatively new and house flipping is not something um, that, that is, it, it's, it's cyclical, right? So it, it's up and down. So I, I have to, grab the grapes while the grapes are ripe yeah. uh, but prepare for the winter that's coming yeah and you know that it's cyclical and so this is the reason why you're diversifying and getting more liquid um and still living you know be below your means is what i heard um yeah i think a lot of guys that that want to get into flipping gals that want to get into flipping um there there's a lot of marketing out here that attracts them to the real estate classes with the shiny cars and it attracts them with the, the fancy clothes and the dollar signs and the suits. And, uh, I have to say, um, I make more money per hour in real estate than I've ever made. So that's, that's definitely something that can, can be a tool to buy things that you like to buy. Um, but it is, it is certainly a business where it's, it's not all flash and, uh, there's some hard work, and there's some protection that you need to surround yourself with in order to to maintain those things. You don't want to yeah. get out here in a million dollar house or multi millions of dollars in liabilities and not not have some reserves or a diversification of income. So yeah, and, and you know, I just like um, so my mentors. You know, they I made the statement to them one day. I said, "Look, my first year in real estate wholesaling, 
I could have literally bought a Lamborghini if I wanted to. You know, but why would I do that? Why not take that money and turn it over into assets that then become assets that generate me money? You know, that that that's the difference, I guess, in mindset. And that's where people fail, I believe. Uh, you know, I see some of these guys out of Memphis that are wholesaling. They've got a great market. Wholesaling market and flipping market's great. Um, but they're just burning and turning and then putting 26-inch rims on their car instead of taking that eight thousand dollars that they could have used for a down payment on another house yeah yeah and i think that this is why i i wanted to bring you on is because your mindset is totally different than so many guys that get into wholesaling or flipping um you you've got it right and i think a lot of people think i'm crazy <laughs> because i buy a lot of stuff but i think um we have similar paths in that once you told me, I have a similar story. I, I was a principal of a school. I had, um, you know, 40, 50 employees um, making six figures plus bonuses, a career with a good retirement account. And I thought like that I was, I was living, but those nice paychecks that would come in every month or a couple of weeks, uh, they were going right back out. Just buy a nicer yeah. house or, you know, put cars on payments. And, you know, when the bill collectors would call and say, hey, look, you know, we need some money. I had it to give them, but I was borrowing it from the next paycheck. And yeah. uh, it didn't make any sense. Like you go to school, get all these degrees and you get a nice job and you don't have any money. And I hear your story. And I'm just like, once somebody explained to me that instead of buying liabilities, I could buy assets. I just decided to take off with it. And so right now I'm buying income. You got some income, yeah. call, grab the map. <laughs> call Simple <laughs> Home Exits, right? Um, and yeah. it's like, if you if you could tell me, I, I want to have as many people paying me at the beginning of a month as possible. And it's just a beautiful thing. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you you kind of have a, a similar story. We have some parallel there. Let me, let me dive into something that you just said um, because you kind of snuck it in and we hadn't brought it up yet, but you said jump to full time. Like, have you jumped to full time again in real estate or, or have you quit your job? Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. So I quit my job again, uh, July, uh, the beginning of July will be um, my jump to full time real estate. Hold up, um, say, it, say it again. We gotta put something above your head. I quit my <laughs> job. <laughs> That's awesome, again, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, in an election year too, by the way. We don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, but, crazy. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I quit. I, I did. I jumped made the jump and uh I'm gonna say that um it was and, and I've had I had some older guys at church, you know, that I would I went and asked, you know, of course I, I really value older people that have been involved, whether they you know, they're they were in their own own their own business. It may it wasn't real estate, but I really value a Christian man's that's been there's um, opinion. And so I went to those guys and I said, Hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing. What's your thoughts, you know? And uh, you know, one really successful guy, he told me, he said, Sean, he said, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're going to succeed because you're willing to put in the work. Yeah. And um, um, so that right there kind of just, let me know, you know, that give me the confidence. Um, and, and, uh, you know, that's, I think at times I kind of seek other people's, um, what do you call it? Um, approval advice. Approval. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's some insecurities, if I can be a hundred percent candid, you know, I think some of that's insecurities, but at the same time, I, you know, I, I want to be as smart as I can on the decisions that I make. And so I do seek, approval from older people that have been there and done that. Understand. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously that, that tells us that you're humble. That tells us that you, you realize that you don't know everything. Right. And there are a lot of people in this business and in other businesses that have done things. They, they've been through some things. And if we can uh, not touch the hot stove, so to speak, by getting their advice, uh, seeking their blessing, um, it yeah. could be a great thing, right? And I think a lot of yeah. times we we think if we go it alone and maybe go against some of some folks' advice that we're we're fighting, <laughs> but mm 
but sometimes we need to go with their advice because if something does happen or if you see a great opportunity you now have those people that you can turn to and say hey look i jumped out here now this is what i need from you so you you also can create partners that way hey but yeah. tell me about the decision making process like you you went ahead and decided to do it was there some financial goal that you were trying to reach before you did it or did you jump out there had you had you had more success other than the 750 dollars before you quit your job <laughs> yeah so i did have a goal um I, I jumped the gun on that goal, though, so I did it before I met my goal because I, I seen the opportunity there. But um, so initially what I had was I had a goal to be able to make 10000 a month in cash flow from the rentals that I had coming in. Okay. And uh, and so that was that was uh, that was my goal. And wow. I wasn't going to quit. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to quit until then. Um, but as uh, you know i i had the opportunity there was two things that kind of pushed me um to quit the first thing was kind of what we was discussing prior to going live is i was not the best employee you know and um and there was two things that kind of affected me in that one uh is you know as far as religion goes the bible tells you to work hard in what you do and mm -hmm. give it all you've got well i wasn't I wasn't, I was, I was failing at that. So in all honesty, I kind of felt bad about it. Um, but I didn't feel bad enough to quit doing what I was doing because I knew where I was going. And, uh, and so that was number one. And then the second thing was, um, you know, I had a coworker that was a dear friend. I've worked with him for 12 years. Um, and, uh, and he just literally got pissed at me. You know, he was, he was tired of seeing me on my lunches or in the break room or I had an office, you know, and, and I'd have the door closed because I'd end up somebody would call me and I'd have to walk over and close the door because I didn't want to drop the call. You uh, were slacking. I was slacking. That's it. Yeah. You know, well, I know all about it. I know all about <laughs> it. And I can't go into it right now because I'm not where you are. But but uh, I know about being a bad employee. So I understand. So that that will that desire to to not be a bad employee or to not um, I think the, the verse might say like doing the best we can at everything we do. Right. Um, yeah. that was also pushing you to jump in full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, and then I had, I had some guys that, um, that I've now partnered up with the simple home ed exits that were phenomenal businessmen that owned a multi-million dollar business, um, prior to me and sold it, um, approached me and said, it's time we want you, we want to be on a team with you. We see your value and, um, and come with us full time. That helps. That helps. Yeah. So you, you definitely got, got some things going for you, um, in that way. All right. So tell us, um, I, th I think one, this is a great place to say, um, walk us through one of your real estate deals by the numbers, something you've worked on recently, or maybe your favorite deal. Hmm. I want to tell you my favorite deal because that deal to me is, I mean, I just love it. So, all right. So had a house on, um, in Tupelo. Um, it was vacant. It had been sitting vacant for, um, I would say five years and, um, called the lady up, said, Hey, um, looking at, this property was wondering if people were going to be willing to sell it. Yes. So she decided she was going to meet me at the house. She met me at the house uh, because they were going to be in Tupelo um, that morning because her grandson was in ICU at Tupelo. Uh, so she's from Aberdeen and she, she decided she was going to meet me at the house. Uh, uh, so I met her there, um, walked through the house. I mean, it's sitting vacant so long. Of course, you know about cobwebs walk hitting you in the face as you're walking through and everything. And so, um, we negotiated a price on that house that was it worked really good with her because she's just been sitting there paying taxes she owned it free and clear she inherited it from her dead husband mm -hmm. and um um so we negotiated a price that worked really well for her um and i believe if i'm not mistaken i got that house and we'll work just off numbers i got that house for twenty five thousand is what i negotiated a price for okay. i put that house out there 
um, to some buyers that I had um, at 30. I want to say actually I said 32 and um, because and and I think I sold it for 30. So I made 5,000 on a wholesale fee on that transaction. Okay. Um, now that house was a three bedroom, one bath brick house on a slab. Okay. So it was still a great deal for, for the investor. Yeah. You got the call. Um, me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, what happened after that though um, i had the privilege of praying for her uh, grandson in that living room uh and and made a friendship with her and uh um so much so that she invited me to her 80th birthday party okay all right yeah so i went to her 80th birthday party so i got there and it was at a church now john i was the only white guy up in this church mm -hmm. and uh you talk about having a blast we cut up I, you know, but it just, you know, that I did look at, look, I had some funny looks when I walked up in there because me and my wife and kids, but, uh, but once, once they sat down and knew what I was there for, um, we just had a blast. And, and so we got to talk in there at the, at the, um, at the birthday party. And, um, she said, Sean, she said, um, I've got this land that I want to sell. Would you be interested in buying it? Do you know the land I'm talking about, John? I, I might once you tell me, but right now I don't. Okay. All right. So I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I'll, I'll, um, I'll look at the, I'll look at the land. Can you give me an idea on the price? She said, well, go look, go by and look at the land and then let's meet. So I said, okay. So we went by, I went by and looked at the land. It was right off of highway 276. And, um, and I said, um, so I called her and I said, yes, ma'am, I'd be interested in it. What, what would you want for it? She said, well, come meet me. So she met me back at that brick house that, mm -hmm. uh, that I'd wholesale. And, uh, she brought a piece of paper with her. And it was a tax, it was the tax papers. And so it was valued at $6,700 was the tax value on the land. Mm -hmm. This was 23.7 acres. Okay. And, um, um, she said, I want this right here, $6,700. And I said, are you sure? She said, yeah. She said the highways didn't come through and paid me for the land. She said they didn't bought whatever, how many it was. It was initially like 30 something acres and they bought quite a few 10 acres from her and paid it. She said, so she was tickled to death to just get it off her plate because she's still paying taxes on this. Mm -hmm. So I bought 23.7 acres for $6,700, which ended up being about 7,400 with closing costs and everything. Yeah. That's um, amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but it all comes down to this. Here's the point. Number one, <clears throat> I was able to make good relationships with her. I mean, we, we hit it off and it's because I cared about her. You know, I cared about her grandson. I mean, and I honestly did, you know, mm -hmm. enough so that I went and hung out with her on her birthday and everything else. And that's where that deal come from was because I cared about a person and not about profit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I heard relationship all throughout that, that story. You talked, you told us the numbers, which I like in this, this question, you told us the exact numbers. Um, and, but you also told us that you built a relationship with somebody. Um, and I can, I can testify to that, that some of my best deals have come because people know, like, and trust me, right? They come because people want to do business with you. Um, and I've had sellers that, man, I've got one right now. I've got a seller who said, I don't want to sell it to anybody else. I want to sell it to you. And he's taking less money because we have a rapport, right? And yeah. you know, it's 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 good when they happen that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that I like about when when I deal with you, because in full transparency, you're you're you 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 find deals, man. You find deals, uh, and I, I bought some of them from you because you've bought some things that make a lot of sense for for what I do. And I like to buy properties, fix them up, and rent them out. And you do leave meat on the bone in the deals that we've, that we've done. But what I like about what you do is that you think long-term, like you are not thinking about, uh, and I, I could be totally wrong, but in my interactions with you, you're thinking about, I want to do deals for a long time. I want to have relationships for a long term. And you're not just thinking that I want to make so much money on this flip that the end buyer can't make any money. And I just made a quick lick. Is that, is that how you think about it? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and because that's honestly in our market, um, we're a small market anyway. We're going to come up against each other, and so yeah. we have to work together instead of being competition. We need to be, we need to be together in, a, in allegiance as far as getting deals done. Yeah, yeah, and and your long term thinking. Um, I think I have to admit, like I I started my business. You know, I started about six years ago, and I started. Um, I didn't think that way at the beginning. You know, I, there I, people who've listened to my podcast, they know I've, I, I messed up some relationships at the beginning because I just wanted the money. And uh, it's the biggest regret that I have. Um, so hearing you think like that now is definitely something that, that uh, is, is something that I resonate with. Anytime that I get into a situation where I feel like it might be, I might be getting greedy or I might be thinking short term, I back out. Like I'm completely out. I don't want anything to do with it because I value the relationship much more than I value the money. And, and it's good to hear that from you. Another thing that I like, and I know we're running out of time, but um, another thing that I like uh, about with you is that you, you have this uh, ability to think outside of the box to get things done. And we heard that in your story right there. Um, where does that come from? Your ability to think outside of the box, creative thinking to get deals done. And how has that benefited you? Yeah, yeah. You know, and this might sound crazy, John, but I think part of that is just straight hustle, man. Mm -hmm. I, when I grew up, I was broke. You know, I thought LA gears were high end, you know. And uh, they lighted up, they did the lights on <laughs> they the did, they too. did, right? So, I, and I couldn't afford them, right? So, I didn't even get to get any, but um, but but I've always wanted things in life, I wanted decent things, but I didn't have the money to get them, and so um, I had to figure out ways to make it work for me, you know, and and that kind of comes back to um, what I was telling you earlier is I would. You know, I would go buy a three wheeler for 400 bucks that, you know, that I could put a little bit of work into. But also, you know, thinking outside the box with real estate comes from um, me being willing to listen to a bunch of different people because every person has really good ideas. Some of the ideas may not work for you but they might work for somebody else. But what I do is I listen to a lot of people and then I take that one and I say, you know what? I like that piece of that part and I'm going to stick that right back here. And that's going to, yeah. I'm going to store that. And so I, I grab from a whole bunch of different people, small tidbits and then make it my own. Absolutely. So you're, you're just like collecting tools and putting them in a toolbox and then you pull them out when you need them. Right. Yeah. And, and I can testify to this, like there have been times where I run out of ideas and jump on the call with you and you say, well, have you thought about this? And I'm like, well, I knew that this is something I could do, but I didn't think about applying it in this situation. Um, so man, I'm excited about the success of your business. I'm excited things are taking off. Um, excited about the branding I see here. Um, <laughs> You know, you look happy, you look healthy. So that's an awesome thing as well. Um, maybe we'll just wrap up with with that question. Like, how has real estate benefited your life? Yeah, um, there's a couple of things. One, w with my job, uh, it was a high stress job. I was a production manager. You know, I was managing, you know, tons and tons of employees. Um, and, you know, and so my... I, I had a lot of stress. Um, and uh, so that's one major thing is my stress level has changed. So I still have stress, but my stress is not stress that jacks my blood pressure 50 miles high. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different style. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is I have an opportunity now um, if I choose to spend time in areas that I want to spend time in, whether that be with my family or my kids. Yeah. Um, now, now, of course, uh, right now, uh, I'm wide open uh, trying to, you know, build this business and, and everything else. But, it, but, you know, next in three weeks, I'm going on a week, week long hunt, you know? And um, so, I mean, that, that's changed my life drastically and given me the flexibility to have free time if I wanted it. 
Yeah. You, so you've got some more control of your time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, Sean and man, I, there's so many things we could go into today. So many, uh, so, so many things you said that just make me want to invite you back on the podcast. And so I have to stop and just say, I, I told you we'd stick to this time frame. But um, hey, look, if, if, if there's anything I can do in your business, let's, let's get together, man. This, this conversation has definitely opened my eyes to even more opportunities for us to work together. Um, you're doing great work. You're helping a lot of people. Um, I see you solving problems all the time. Um, how can people reach out to you if they are interested in working with you or buying a house or, or however else they might be able to, to partner with you? Yeah. Yeah. So they can, um, they can reach us uh, on our social media platforms, bearded property investors or simple home exits. Mm -hmm. um, that's Facebook. Um, both of those mainly that's what we do. Um, they can also send me an email at bearded property investors at gmail.com. Um, and then, and, and then also, and then you just, if they'll send me that, then I'll shoot them a reply back and maybe we can get a phone call or something. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for your time. Very exciting conversation. I'm glad we did this. Um, everybody, you know that this is Grab the Map. We like real estate investing. Um, I love talking to people that are just getting started, people trying to grow their business. I'm an active investor, um, but I do respond to every email at grabthemap at gmail.com. This is where we don't just look at it, but we grab the map.